Calm down, Nipper. That dog just tried to bury my slipper on the beach. Why ever did you agree to look after him? He's just a nuisance. No, he's not. He's a good dog. He just likes burying things, don't you, Nipper? Oh, no! Sisters, I'm so sorry, Helen. Hello, Bronwyn. Helen, uh, maybe Nipper should be on a lead. Yes, but he escaped. He's got so much energy, I don't know what to do with him. Why not take Nipper on a really long walk? Tire him out. You're right, Sam. We'll go along the cliff path. That should do it. Don't forget to take your phone with you, Bronwyn, in case of emergencies. No, Sam. No, I won't. Not cooking today, then, Elvis? I was, but I had a minor accident with the frying pan. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, not having much luck with lunch today. Somebody just take him out, please. Don't worry. Nipper and I are going to have a lovely long walk and picnic together. Sarah, James, why don't you come with me? Yeah! Aww, but walking is tiring. Well, James, why don't you come fishing with me? We'll have a picnic on the boat. Yay! Right. Now then, what do we need to take? Dog lead, some water... Your mobile phone. Here you are, Elvis. Sorry about that. Thanks, Charlie. Third time lucky, eh? Red is for danger. Red is what I said. Bring it with a fake, please, lads. Sorry. Such a catchy song, I can't stop singing it. Then sing it somewhere else. No problem. I'm off duty this afternoon. I'll sing it on the beach. All right, Nipper, I'll let you off the lead now. Be a good boy for Bronwyn, eh? <laughs> Maybe this'll convince Mum to give me my ball back. There's nothing wrong with that fire alarm, Norman, and you know it. You set it off deliberately. <gasps> no, I didn't! Do you know the story of the boy who cried wolf? No. Why? It's about a boy who kept pretending he'd seen a wolf. He'd cry, help, wolf! And all the villagers would come running. The boy would laugh and say, see, I tricked you. <gasps> then what happened? One day... A real wolf came, and the boy cried out, Help, wolf! But this time, nobody believed him, so they didn't come. And did the wolf eat him up? So they say. I still didn't do it. <sighs> OK, we better get back to the station. See you later, Dillis. Norman, where do you think you are going? You are grounded. Go to your room. Jess. 
Oi! Shoe on feet! Charlie! I was trying to make friends. I might have known. was actually only 182 miles per hour. So what did he look like, Trevor? Well, their uppermost feathers are dark grey and... Falcon! <laughs> Sorry, false alarm. No! Oh, now she's stalled. Thanks, Mandy, but I do know how to drive. Oh. We're stuck. This is all your fault, Norman. No, it's not. It was all the revving that did it. Look! There's Tom! Stop! Ah! Need a hand, Triv. It's all right. Take a manage. Please help, Tom. Oh, we'll never get to see any peregrine falcons. Ah, oh, they'll only take a few seconds. There's nothing wrong with the radiator. Besides, you don't need to go up so high to see peregrines. The one I saw the other day was at the bottom of the valley. No, the place to find peregrines is in the hills. Come on, kids. All aboard. <laughs> oh, it's so hot in here. Why haven't you opened the window? Uh. I was a bit worried about letting the air in, just in case it started a fire. Don't be daft, Elvis. Open it. <laughs> <laughs> now you've let a fly in instead. Boy, get off my lemonade. <laughs> Allow me, sir. <laughs> Ow! Elvis! Oh, sorry. It was an accident. <laughs> Look! There's one! Ha! I saw it first! That's not a peregrine. It's a seagull. I know what a seagull looks like. That was a peregrine. Dummy, baby, dummy, and a dance with me. Dummy, baby, flip the crinkly turn. Stop dancing with the dummy. <laughs> You need to take this seriously, Elvis. I'm using the dummy to teach you first aid. You need to think of it as a real person. OK, Helen. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Now, as I was saying, the kiss of life, it's important to get this right. <laughs> Hello, Norman. What do you think you're doing? I just need a bit of rope for making a go-kart. Well, you can't have that bit. It's tying my boat to the key. Maybe I do have something you could use. Come on, come on. <laughs> In a bit of a hurry, are we? Yep. I'm making the best go can ever. <laughs> I 
took the wheels off my old pram. It doesn't look very safe to me. That's why I have a safety belt. <laughs> you mean your mum's belt and the helmet? Happy now? No, I'm still not sure. You're right. It doesn't look cool enough yet. I need more wood. Do you think your dad will be back yet? And one for you, and one for you. <laughs> Elvis, what is that dummy doing at the table? He's having lunch. Helen told me to think of him as a real person. <laughs> but he's not a real person. He's a dummy. Shh, sir. He'll hurt his feelings. <laughs> Waiting for him. I've already found something I can use. These. They'll make my go kart look really cool. Never mind, Station Officer Steel. I'll still treat you like a real person. Elvis, your lunch is getting cold. Oh, uh, wait here. I'll be right back. <laughs> it looks like a proper racing car now. Mom doesn't make it any safer. Okay, then. Let's have a dummy run and see how safe it is. Norman! What are you doing? You shouldn't take things without asking. Maybe it was there for a reason. You worry too much. Lion? I don't think he's come back since this morning. He's not upstairs. And he's not in the cellar, either. Oh, well, he's probably just out and about. You know, Lion. But maybe we should call Fireman Sam, just to be on the safe side. Lion. Lion. Meow. Meow. I'm sorry, Bronwyn, but there's no sign of any stowaways in the fire engines. I don't think Lion came back here. Hmm. Of course, Bronwyn. We'll all keep an eye out for him. I'm sure he'll turn up. Why don't you put out some food for him? Lion? Lion? Here, kitty, kitty, king of the jungle. Come back. Come on, let's go home. For all we know, Lion might be back there waiting for us right now. It's a penny! I wish Lion would come back. Lion! Lion? Oh. 
kids stay this side of the tape, they should be perfectly safe. Have you got that, Mandy? Stay on this side of the tape. Yes, Dad. I'm not a baby. Um, perhaps I should check inside your workshop, Mike, to make sure that's all safe, too. Make sure you keep the fireworks well away from here. All this wood could easily catch fire. Lion! That's another one of Sam's top ten tips. Keep pets indoors. That's a very important safety rule. Animals can be very scared of the bangs. Yes, I know. Give them to me, Mandy. I'll take him back to the cafe. He'll be safe there. scared of a paper bag. I dread to think how he'll react to the fireworks. Just make sure you keep him indoors tonight. Don't worry, we will. Now, Mike Flood needs some metal buckets to put the old sparklers in. Oh, there are some in the cellar. I'll get them. No, I'll get them. No, oh, no. <coughs> Hello, love. James and Sarah just fetching some buckets. Hello oh. there, lion. <coughs> Tonight, everyone else, relax. Oh, dear. Pick the worst day of the year for a garden party, eh, Mike? It's raining even more heavy. What's happened? Oh, it's a wretched power cut. The storm's caused it. Don't worry. The engineers will go out and fix it. Torches! I I'll find the torches! Hey! Don't worry, sir. <laughs> like the dark. Ow! My nose! My broken my nose! Oh, dear. Let me see. Oh. Help! Oh! I was in the kitchen. You weren't cooking anything, were you, Dillis? Because it's important to turn off your cooker when there's a power cut. No, it wasn't. But I hope the lights come on soon. It's spooky. Ah! Norman Rice! Oh, you can't play your electric guitar for us without electricity. No, and we can't cook the sausages either. It's a disaster. <gasps> the rain stopped! We can go outside. I'll set up the barbecue and we can finish the sausages on that. I'll help. You will do no such thing. <laughs> right, we'll need paper napkins too so we can eat the sausages with our fingers. Uh, oh, hello? Oh, hi, Penny. You want to speak to Helen? Uh, here she is. 
Hello, Penny. I'm really sorry to have to ask you, Helen. It's Station Officer Steele's nose. He had an accident in the blackout. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I won't be long. It's Station Officer Steele's nose. Make sure you all take care now. Oh, at last! Great. Now we can see to test the smoke alarm. There you go, Dillis. And the rain stopped too. Things are looking up. I was passing, Norman. You all right, Trevor? That was a pretty close call. Listening to headphones while crossing the road is very dangerous. You can't hear the cars coming. Sorry, Sam. I was listening to my new MP3 player. My mom gave it to me for my birthday. You're shouting, Norman. Oh, uh, sorry. It's a very nice birthday present, Norman, but I suggest you leave them off until you're away from the traffic. But, Norman! Hi, Mandy! There you are. I just bought you a birthday present. Really? Where is it? He left it with your mum. Oh, come on! <sighs> the youth of today. Mum, Mum, where's my present? Don't tell me you've gone and lost it already. No, not my present from you. My present from Mandy. Oh, right. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, an airplane? Cool. Oh, uh, but it's all in pieces. <laughs> of course it is. It's a model. It was my dad's idea. See, there are instructions. You glue it together and paint it, and it makes the plane on the box. I'm going to make it right now. Say thank you to Mandy. Thank you to Mandy. Norman, you left your new TLC player down here. These pieces are too small. I'll need a magnifying glass to see them properly. Now, that looks cool. Look at the engines. Oh, I wonder where this piece goes. Why don't you read the instructions? I don't need to. I can work out how to do it. Oh, dear. I hope I haven't broken it. <laughs> like mother, like son, eh? Oh, Sam, I gave Norman this new PVC player. But I don't know how it works. Can you help me? Let me take a look. Uh, I think you push this button. But you should turn it down. What? I can't hear you. I don't know how to turn it down. This year, the supermarket is going to have the best Christmas decorations in Pandy Bandy. I think we have enough decorations now, Norma. Come on, Mum. We need some of these ones. And oh, uh, some of these. Uh, they blink on and off. I haven't untangled the last lot yet, Norman. And there's not enough places to plug them all in. Oh, come on, Mum. It's going to look brilliant in here when we get them all going. Well, Sam, what do you think? I don't think putting all those plugs into one socket is a very good idea. But, Sam, I want to decorate the kitchen for Christmas, too. That's all well and good, but where did you get this old thing? This type of adapter can overheat, especially if you plug so many things into it. Oh, I was only trying to brighten the place up a little. Well, you can. But why don't you use an extension and plug the lights in over here? Like it. 
I hope you're happy now, Norman Price. Come on, ma'am. That's just the light. We need some other decorations, too. We definitely have to have one of these. A giant Santa! Norman Price, you are just being greedy. We don't even have a garden to put one of those up in. We don't need a garden. He can be up on the roof like he's about to go down the chimney. No, Norman, no. I mean it this time. Oh, OK, ma'am. If you don't want me to be happy this Christmas. If you like, Mandy, I won't be long. have to get some extra strong screws from a workshop for this gate. Yep, yeah, bye, love. Ready for Norman to rock it then, Wooly? Whoosh! <laughs> them in a real-life emergency situation one day. Well, the next time we need them, I promise I'll let you operate them, Elvis. They might come in handy the next time you burn the Sunday roast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! 
promised I could use the jaws of life the next time we needed them. But we don't need them. All we need to do is move this wood and open the door. Oh, thanks, Sam. I was starting to wonder if I'd ever get out. <laughs> Come on, you two. All the buckets are exactly the same. Dad, no! Whoever has the lucky bucket always collects the most. How can a plastic bucket be lucky? Lots of things can be lucky, Charlie. Like this lucky stone. Uh, maybe I should take the lucky bucket so there won't be any arguments. OK, Norman. That's a great idea. Dad! Well... Norman's never had a turn with the lucky bucket before. I bet I collect more than Sarah and James put together. Norman? Norman! Norman Price, I have a job for you. Ooh, hello, Norman. Where are you off to in such a hurry this morning? Ah, uh ha! -huh. There you are. Oh, thanks, Bronwyn. He nearly got away. <laughs> OK, Mike, here's a list of the jobs you need to remember to do. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Don't worry, Mum. I look after Dad. Ha-ha, very funny. <laughs> what? Helen? This can't be right. Bye, Mum. Let's turn on your clothes. There are a lot of jobs in this house, Norman Price. You can't expect me to do everything. You can pick up your dirty clothes and put them in the laundry basket for a start. But uh, I'm not even sure what the laundry basket looks like. It's in the bathroom under the sink. I've never noticed it. This, Norman Price, is the laundry basket. Oh, but uh, how does it open? Like this. Um, how do you put clothes into it? <laughs> oh, I think you can work that out. And I expect you to take the basket down to the cellar and put a wash on today. But, Mum! <laughs> I've tidied my room, made my bed and washed the dishes, which means my jobs are done. Fancy doing a little bit of ironing then, sweetheart? No, thanks. I'm meeting up with Norman to go skateboarding. <laughs> oh. Are you all right down there, Norman? There are a lot of dirty clothes. I think you'll have to put on two washes. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry 
your pelvis. <gasps> Sorry, Sam. I just don't seem to be able to wake up at the moment. Well, it's a good job. It's been a quiet day. false alarm. Mandy was making breakfast for Helen this morning. And Dad was helping. He's the one who burned the toast. I didn't burn it. I just forgot that it was toasting, that's all. Care for some fresh toast now that you're here? I won't burn it. I promise. No thanks, Mike. We'd best get back to the station in case there's a real emergency. <laughs> Skateboarding today. Sorry, Norman, but I'm spending the day with my mum. It's Mother's Day. Did you do something nice for your mum this morning? Yep. <laughs> I gave her a box of cereal. Norman, she'll think you don't care about her. Mandy made me this lovely letter holder in school. I was making one of those, only I couldn't be bothered to finish it. I could help you finish it now if you like, Norman. Um, no thanks, Mike. It wasn't very good anyway. Or I could help you make something else for your mum in the workshop. Oh, but what about skateboarding? I don't really think of your mum as the skateboarding type. <laughs> <laughs> Mother's Day special tonight, Trevor. You should come along. <laughs> nice idea, Charlie. But my mother is 72 years old and lives abroad. I don't think she could get here in time for dinner tonight. <laughs> or you could make a coat rack to put on the wall. No, thanks. Would you want like a footstool? No. Can't I just make something easy? Oh, I know. Can I use this? OK, but what for? <laughs> it's a candle holder. Mum would love a new candle holder. Oh, well, maybe you should put a cross piece on it to make it more stable, Norman, like this. Uh, no, thanks. This'll do. False alarms are a waste of officers' valuable time, sir. What if a real alarm came in when you were out of the station? I know, sir, but this was a genuine misunderstanding. Better safe than sorry, eh? Eh, quite right, Sam. Ooh, Elvis! Oh, <laughs> Oops. Sorry, Penny. That was your toast. <laughs> Hello, Norman. Did you know that the Whole Fish Cafe has a special Mother's Day menu tonight? Maybe you could take your mum out. No need. I already made her a present, see? 
Hmm. What's this supposed to be, Norman? A candle holder, of course. <laughs> really? Well, it doesn't look like much time and care went into making it. Two should be enough, Sam. Yoo hoo! <laughs> I should make Dolly look like she's waving, Sam. It might look a bit more exciting. <laughs> Whatever you fancy, Elvis. <laughs> what a great place to hide. On a boat. I love hide and seek as much as you, James. But Norman and Mandy take it too far. What do you mean? Remember when Norman hid near the Mountain Rescue Centre? He was missing for a whole day. Tom Thomas had to go searching for him. Come on, let's go and search along the quayside. <laughs> I'm going to find a much better hiding place this time. Doesn't she look a picture? <laughs> I think you are getting attached to Dolly. Well, we're all set. Uh, time for a cup of tea, eh? <laughs> now that's what I call a hiding place. <sighs> Let's face it. We'll never find them. Yup. We've looked everywhere. Funny. I hope Lion hasn't fallen asleep under my lobster pots again. Ugh. Well, what have we here? A stowaway. Ooh. I think I'm seasick. Ugh. James, I think I just found Mandy. Or rather, Dad has. Look! You're right. Hang on. Why is she leaning over the side of the boat? She doesn't look very... Oh. You should never store away on a boat, Mandy. It's not safe to go on a boat without a life jacket. What if you had fallen overboard? I'm really sorry, Mr. Jones. I was just playing hide-and-seek. Well, play it somewhere less dangerous next time. I will. I promise. Found you! Ooh, thanks, Sarah. Well, it looks like Norman's won the hiding competition, then. we better find him and tell him. Let's hope Norman's hidden somewhere a bit safer than my boat, eh? What's up with Radar? Uh, I don't know. He's been behaving very strangely all day. Perhaps there's bad weather on the way. They do say dogs are sensitive to it. Radar's too sensitive. That's his problem. Maybe he just isn't brave enough to be a fire dog. <laughs> The twins! They're desperate to outdo each other! Hello! Careful, Norman! I don't want you falling in! Hmm, Sam would like this. <laughs> I don't call that very unusual or interesting. And anyway, you'd never get it in your pocket. <laughs> That's not a dinosaur's tooth. It's just an old stone. It's a dinosaur's tooth from a T-Rex, probably. Sam's going to love this. Well, I'm going to find something much more interesting than a silly old stone. Bet you don't. Bet I will. <laughs> Looks like it's over Ponty Pandy. I hope it's not coming our way. It's all right, Radar. There's nothing to be scared of. 
You're quite safe in here. Yes, but what if we need to take him out to an emergency? I think we'd better leave. We don't want to be near trees if there's going to be lightning. Doesn't scare me. That's not the point, Norman. It's dangerous. The trees could catch fire if the lightning strikes them. Sarah! James! Time to go! Come in, Mum! You won't find anything better. Steel. Uh, what's that? Oh, my metal detector. I use it to find precious coins buried in the ground. Did you say precious coins? Yes. Somewhere in Ponty Pandy, there's a pile of ancient coins just waiting to be discovered. <gasps> and I bet they'd make a really special present for someone, eh? Can I borrow it? I'll look after it. Uh Please. Well, I, I suppose you can have a go while I have my lunch. But stay away from those cliffs. They can be dangerous. OK, I will. I feel really bad about Station Officer Steele losing that coin. You don't know it was a coin for sure, Elvis. But what if it was? There must be a way I can make things right. Buried coins are hard to find, Elvis. Not if you know exactly where to find them. It's no good. I'll never find anything special for Mum. Huh? Wow! Whatever it is, it's big! Maybe precious coins! Now, where did I put my spade? What a triumph, Bronwyn. Ah, now to find young James and my metal detector. See you soon, Station Officer Steel. With fish and chips this good, you can be sure of that. <laughs> Are you sure about this, Elvis? Positive. My savings box is full of coins. Station Officer Steel will think he's hit the jackpot when he digs them up. But they aren't old coins. No, but they are precious, because they are Elvis's coins. Oh, where is that scallywag? What? James? James! Where are you? If you're stuck, give him a shout. He'll be there to help you out. So move aside, make way. 